Hi, I hope that your May is off to an incredible start. May is off to a powerful start because we are starting off with Pluto in retrograde. Now, Pluto went retrograde on the 1st of May and it's been in its shadow phase for a few months now, actually, since the beginning of the year, since January. And Pluto is one of the most significant planets right now for us because Pluto represents power at the collective level, but also at the individual level. And why is this theme of power extra important right now? Because we're also moving through the eclipse portal. And this eclipse portal is specifically focusing on us calling back our power. And it's working a lot with our solar plexus. So in this energy update, I'm going to share some information of what are the three focuses that would be helpful for you to have during this Pluto retrograde that started on May 1st and goes all the way until the 1010 portal on October 10th, 2023. Now, the three most important things are really to hone in on pausing, observing the subconscious mind, and working intentionally with your energy center, specifically the sacral, the root, and the solar plexus. So why is it important for us to pause right now? Well, if we look at Pluto, Pluto is one of the outer planets and it takes Pluto 248 years for it to orbit the sun. And because it has like so 248 years to the equivalent of earth years so it moves very slowly and during retrogrades for us here on earth it looks like these planets are coming to a standstill right they're not really moving backwards but to us it looks like they're standing still and moving backwards and when retrogrades happen it's mostly strongly felt during the beginning and the end but because pluto is such a slow moving planet um when it comes to a halt, it's we're going to feel its energy for a very long time because it, its energy like carries a longer span of time because again it takes 248 years for it to orbit the the sun so this means that um, we're going to feel its energy not just on may 1st but throughout the entire week of May, the first week of May, but obviously um, it's going to be in retrograde until October 10th, so it's we'll feel all of its energy until then. And Pluto specifically focuses on the subconscious mind. So this is why it's important for us to pause. Just like when, if we were to look up, Pluto would look like it's stopping right now. It's also an invitation for you to pause um, before acting because that's the third thing we need to do, right? Act and connect with the solar plexus because Pluto represents power. And what is power? Power is about um, using our resources, our wisdom, our skill sets to act in our best interest and in the best interest of uh, those around us. And so before you make any um, important decisions this month, before you have any important um, conversations, any choices that you have before you're going to make your choice, you have to take a moment to pause and to find alignment. And from this space, connect with your subconscious mind because Pluto represents the subconscious mind. Pluto represents secrets. It represents shadows. And I mean, that's why I'm wearing black, you know, because I, I, I was meditating with Pluto. I actually ash, projected to Pluto to feel its energy, to connect with its energy about what is this specific retrograde about for the collective. And you might find that helpful maybe to um, work with black crystals to help you to ground, to connect more, and also to connect with a subconscious mind because there's a lot of things brewing in, in, in the surface, right? Again, this Pluto retrograde is happening the same week as the 5-5 portal and the eclipse, the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Scorpio and Pluto both represent secrets, the shadow, death, rebirth, transformation, power, sexuality. And so there's going to be a lot of things brewing in the surface, right? Because the eclipse in Scorpio and Pluto itself is about transformation. 
So transformation, there's a lot of moving, shifting energy. And before we act, we have to pause and to connect with the subconscious mind and take a moment to observe what are all of the different perspectives? Um, what are the subconscious desires, subconscious secrets, um, subcon subconscious drivers that we have um, before we make any decisions or have any conversations? That's gonna be super, super, super important because keep in mind, we are towards the end of the quantum gateway that we've been moving through since November. And um, if you're interested in more in learning more about the Quantum Gateway, I made a video about it back in January, so you can um, check that out on my YouTube channel. Okay, so um, because Pluto is so focused on the subconscious, we're going to see a lot of things rise to the surface during this time. We're gonna see secrets, specifically around power structures. You can think about them, um, all forms of power structures, but secrets are gonna to come to the surface. So be prepared, you know, like ground your energy, um, be prepared for secrets in your family, um, in your friendships, at work to just rise into the surface so that's why it's especially important right now for us to ground because we don't want to get caught off guard right um and then the other third thing that's really important for you to focus on during this pluto retrograde is focusing on your energy centers now there are three main energy centers for you to focus on specifically during this pluto retrograde of course all the energy centers are important but these are the main ones during this pluto retrograde and that is your root chakra now this pluto retrograde is happening within aquarius and a well, it's, it's actually bouncing between Aquarius and Capricorn. So I'll talk about that later. Um, but Aquarius rules the root chakra. And so um, back in March 23, uh, when Pluto first entered Aquarius for the first time in, two, I think it was uh, 225 years, um, a lot of us were feeling root chakra pain. Uh, just aches and pains on our hip area, our tailbone, because collectively we were purging things um, in the root area because that's connected to the Aquarian energy and it's also connected to fear. Now, this is really important because um, Pluto is also connected to power. Like I've been repeating myself and I'm gonna repeat myself because you really have to understand that this Pluto retrograde is about you returning to your power. You call in your power back. And one of the distinctions in understanding the expressions of Pluto is that there's a higher expression of Pluto in, in power and a lower expression of Pluto in power. Now, the one that we obviously wanna work with is the higher expression of Pluto's power, and that is embracing change and calling our power back um, through change. But we cannot um, force change to happen and try to take power back by forcing that to happen. And so just be mindful of that um, because the solar plexus has been moving through a lot of purges collectively again since March. That's why since March and especially this week, um, the first week of May, you may notice indigestion. You may notice um, you having random stomach aches or maybe you're bloating more. And this is because individually um, and also collectively, we are purging from the solar plexus area. Let me know in the comments, have you been noticing um, any discomfort in your solar plexus area, like your stomach, experiencing um, stomach imbalances, um, any sort of issues within your 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 belly area or your lower back uh your tailbone area for me i've been experiencing a lot of like the the lower back area and i was experiencing a lot of imbalances there um so within the solar plexus uh, this is connected to yes power because the Pluto represents power and the solar plexus area represents your area of personal power and right now because we're moving through this eclipse season the next eclipse is going to be on may 5th on the 55 portal and this these eclipses always eclipses often tend to deal with karmic issues karmic clearings individually and collectively and this particular karmic 
residue and, and energy that we're clearing individually is connected to our wounds, to our power, specifically the divine masculine wounds. So we all have divine feminine and, and masculine energy. They have nothing to do with sex or gender. Um, divine masculine just means electric energy and divine feminine just means magnetic energy. So um, within the collective, we're we're clearing the divine masculine, which tends to be connected to um, our ability to act, our confidence, our ability to be in our power and act from our power. And remember from the higher expression of like um, doing this for the highest and greatest good of all, including yourself, rather than forcing power to happen, right? So um, you have to understand that the things that you're experiencing within your physical body, they're not just happening within um, your own soul contract, within your own soul blueprint, because we are incarnated right now with so many different souls, with soul families, with soul groups, uh, with over souls, and as a collective consciousness that we're also helping to um, clear some of this for others as well. And so um, over eons and eons of time, um, the divine masculine has been wounded. And right now what we're seeing happen um, you know, if we take a step back and we look at it from like the big bird's eye view, like, and I mean like out of this planet, like out of planet Earth, outside of our soul, like above our solar system, if we're flying and connecting with our higher self and our soul above our solar system, you will notice that um, there's a shift between the electric and magnetic energy. Uh, that's happening. So on our planet here on Earth, we've seen uh, the patriarchy, we've seen a lot of the electric energy, the masculine energy just be so imbalanced that right now that energy has to be purged, right? The wounds, the imbalanced aspect of the masculine energy that is being cleansed and it has to come back into balance so that that magnetic and electric energy, divine feminine and masculine, whatever you want to call it, um, can be balanced once again and work in harmony right because it's not meant to be one over the other they're actually meant to be in harmony with each other and so um, what we're seeing happen at the big collective levels right at the planetary level with mother earth and the sun and all the solar flares that's happening we can see that happening there as well because the sun is spitting out so many solar flares now that that's just bringing in so much electric energy and mother earth is trying to balance her magnetic energy right so whatever we're seeing happening outside externally in the cosmos is actually a representation of the of, of the micro like and the micro and the macro are literally just mirroring each other and it's just trying to make us aware of all of this um, processes that are always happening internally and externally of this effort to try to find harmony so right now this is why we're experiencing a lot of things in our belly area right with the solar plexus because we're cleansing um, maybe like you know in a, in a past life you were a king or you were a queen and then you were um, betrayed by your court and um, they murdered you right um, or maybe you were a, a general and there was a military coup, right? Like, and then that caused trauma to your uh, to your masculine and its ability to feel safe in its power. And so, um, again, has nothing to do with sex or gender. It's just talking about electric and magnetic energy, which we all have inside of our bodies. And Right now, you will be noticing things in your environment like um, conversations that you're going to be having, opportunities that you're going to be having, choice points that you're going to be having where you're going to be called to f call back your power and be in your power. And at times that can be really uncomfortable, right? Um, because we have these traumas within ourselves, within our consciousness, N this trauma is not within your conscious mind. It's actually within your subconscious mind. And that's why I was saying before, like you have to f focus on your subconscious mind. Pluto is not about the conscious mind. Pluto is more about the subconscious mind, right? What are those subtle things um, the secrets, the hidden aspects um, that are actually running our lives, right? Our programs. And that's why you have to sit with yourself. You have to sit with your soul and observe um, 
why are these imbalances happening? Whether they're on your physical body or they're in your relationships externally. Um, and when I talk about relationship externally, I'm talking about like, yes, relationship with other people, including beings, your spirit guides, and also relationships with money, with career, with status, um, with safety, with health, like your relationship to your health and all, all, all forms of relationships, not just interpersonal relationships. So, um, that's what's happening, right? Like it's a lot, it's a mouthful and it's very difficult to explain because not it's not just this, okay? So yes, this is happening because the eclipse always wants us to purge things. Um, so right now we're like trying to get rid of these wounds and traumas that we've been carrying collectively and individually um, about our fears of being in our power, right? So we're clearing that at the eclipse, but also um, we are, and this is why like, why it's connected to the root because when we're afraid of being in our power your root chakra dom is your root chakra dominates your sense of safety so if you're not feeling safe in your power then your tailbone your hip area the lower part of your back is going to start to cause discomfort in your life and again you have to practice discernment I am not talking about like if you're constantly having lower back pain, right? Um, usually when these cosmic events happen, you will start to notice the, the energy like a week, two weeks before they happened or like two to three days before they happened. All of us have different ways of um, different levels of sensitivity to energy. So you have to practice discernment and understand, is this a health issue? Or is this um, an emotion that's stuff that needs to be cleansed, right? And discernment is the most important thing you have to practice. Even as I'm sharing this information with you, like process everything through your own internal compass. This Pluto in retrograde, um, and not just Pluto in retrograde, but this whole ascension process is all about calling our power back. Um, we are going from a dark age to another golden age, and it's no longer about you giving your power to me and like listening to me and all of my advice because I'm right. No, it's about you like realizing like this is my truth. Um, this makes me feel empowered, right? So like just take whatever feels empowering for you, what feels in resonance. Um, but also, you know, like there are things that make us uncomfortable um, and they're there as triggers. So we can't also reject them. And this is why it's very important for us to do our work, our inner work from our neutral space where we are not really focused on the ego or focus on the mind, but rather we're connecting with the higher mind, the higher mind of the spirit of the soul. Um, because this is what's going to be your like north guiding star um, as we navigate this huge process of transformation that we're going through. And Pluto represents transformation, right? Um, and, and because Pluto has entered Aquarius for the first time, in 225 years, um, you know, we're going to be noticing this at the collective level where people are just going to be like, give me back my power, give me back my power, which is a beautiful experience um, to be a part of, right? To see people claiming back their power and their freedom. So pay attention to your root chakra and any discomfort because um, that's likely connected to your fear of being in your power. Also, the other energy center that you want to pay attention to is your sacral chakra. Now, Pluto governs the sex organs. So your sacral chakra is very much connected to your creativity, to your ability to regulate your emotions, to your sense of pleasure and sexuality. So pay attention to any of these themes, especially if they're coming up in your dreams. Pay attention to your dreams. Have a dream journal because you're going to notice a lot of subtle or very vivid like symbolisms, um, people in your life that are going to be returning back. A lot of people don't understand this, but like sex is, is one of the deepest uh, forms of energy exchange and your sexual history, like yes, you may not be talking to those people, but you still have a cord with them if you had sexual interactions with them, right? So it's very important for you to cleanse um, your your sacral chakra, right? And like keep that as a sacred space so that you're not interacting with energies that you're not intending to interact with, right? And this eclipse season always brings back 
memories from our past, people from our past. Let me know in the comments if you've been having any dreams like from um, just people or memories from your past, right? Just like the last two nights, I've had dreams with people from high school that I haven't talked to in ages. Um, I've had um, dreams about um, my previous workplace that I haven't worked there in like uh, ages, right? And so these things is because there's still something there that we have to heal and unlock. And so pay attention to your sacral chakra, how um, the power dynamics within your own ability to give and receive pleasure look like. Uh, because the sacral chakra, because it's governed by Pluto, it's gonna be very active during this time. Uh, so a good indicator to figure out if there's an imbalance there is to pay attention to the subtle messages that are coming in your dreams. Uh, having a dream journal honestly will make a big, big difference. The best interpreter at dreams is you. Focus on the emotions that come from the symbols, the people, the events in your dreams, right? Like, yes, I know sometimes it can be very tempting to go look it up in the internet. What does this mean? But that's just a generic meaning that honestly, it takes away the richness and, and the treasures um, and the key to those treasures is within the emotions. So you have to unpack the emotions that you receive from the dreams. Okay, so I think that's pretty much um, everything I wanted to talk to about like the Pluto retrograde um, in terms of individually. Now, if we look at this collectively, I love this because there's 55 people right now um, and this this eclipse is happening on the 5-5 portal and it's not an accident because um, if, okay, so this eclipse is the closing of the quantum gateway and the opening of that gate was actually on um, the 11th of November, 1108. And um, which what I what was so fascinating is that when I was looking at like um, and and reflecting on the Pluto retrograde is that Pluto entered its retrograde like its shadow period during January eighth so one o eight and if you look at the number one o eight one plus zero one plus zero plus eight equals nine which represents endings um, you know a closing of a chapter. But also 108 individually, um, it is a very sacred number. It's a number that reflects, again, the macrocosm, right? Like the whole universe, it represents creation itself. Um, that's why it's found within Hindu traditions, Buddhist traditions, and other traditions around the world. If you're interested in exploring more about like the sacredness of the number 108, you can click the link in my bio if you're watching this on Instagram, or you can uh, look at the description in this video if you're watching this on YouTube, where I discuss the importance of the number 108 and how it's actually tied to how big the earth is compared to the sun um, and the moon moon, like there's just so much synchronicity and so much perfection um, within that number. So um, this Pluto in Aquarius um, move started on March 23, which is just two days after the equinox. So the equinox in March started the energetic new year. And some people are saying that when Pluto entered um, Aquarius, uh, that was the start of the uh, the golden age of Aquarius. Honestly, I think it's pretty hard to pinpoint one specific day when this happens. For me, I understand it as like gateways, right? Like it's like, imagine these doors of an elevator. When does an elevator really open? Is it when the um, doors are fully opened or is it when they start to open? So um, I don't think it's that important to try to pinpoint one day where the golden age of Aquarius started, but I think it's cool that people are saying that it's um, you know March 23rd when, when Pluto entered Aquarius. And I mean, it, it makes sense because Aquarius represents the collective, it represents um, you know, this idea of just being eccentric and just being innovative uh, and, and it's about community and it's about technology, which is, you know, where we're heading back to. Like in Atlantis, during the last golden age, they had incredible technology, human technology, health technology, agricultural technology, sound technology, um, high magic technology, technology, technology in the terms of like what we think about them today in terms of computers and spaceships. 
um, and all of that. Um, and yes, we're going to return back to that, but it's gonna take time, right? Um, so um, it's really fascinating the times that we're living in today because um, the last time that Pluto entered Aquarius was during the revolutions, the American Revolution and the French Revolution. And right now we're literally seeing another French Revolution, which is just so awesome if, if you're not aware. I mean, just look up the hashtag French Revolution on TikTok and you're going to see people like literally calling back their power all across France. Um, it was really fascinating because um, over the weekend I saw this video where um, the people in France um, they stormed into a black rock building um, and calling back, you know, our power from these structures that are concentrating wealth and power. And it's like enough is enough, you know, so it's just really beautiful to see people calling it back. But I think it's very important for us to do this from uh, a neutral space as much as possible, because I mean, uh, the the police brutality that's happening as a result of that, right? Like we don't want to, things to like escalate. And so um, on that note though, there are many different people who are playing different roles, right? There's the people who are here to break things, to break old structures. There are people here to um, help bridge the old structure to the new structure, more like, old world to the new world and there's people here that are building the new world so everyone has their own role and you have to like figure out right practice discernment what is your role in the world that we're living in today how are you going to call back your power because you have to understand that when you call back your power you help other people call back their power um, because we're all interconnected by this like giant web of consciousness like it's literally we're like the internet but the living version of the internet, basically. And so um, with these revolutions happening around the world, um, they're actually part of like the, if we look at the astrology, it's kind of already written in the stars if you want to think about it that way. Um, and before I get into that, I want to caveat that like, um, yes, Pluto represents all of these, these things, transformation, death, rebirth, secrets, power, and um, alchemy and all of these things, but you have to work with this energy intentionally. We're not like, you know, bystanders here. If you're just a bystander and if you're not actively working with the energy, then you're not gonna benefit as much, right? And it's, I'm also not saying that um, astrology like governs our lives, but rather um, we are all obsessed with checking the weather app right like we're always like okay what am i gonna wear today um is it gonna be sunny do i need to bring sunglasses is it gonna be raining do i need to bring an umbrella we're always looking at the weather to plan our day right it's the same thing with astrology um and if we just look at the patterns in astrology um it's just history repeats itself but it's also karma karma is just a cycle that keeps on going right um and that's why it's so fascinating if we look at the last time that uh, Pluto went uh, enter Aquarius we had these revolutions happening and now look at us 225 years later we're seeing another revolution happening and it's not just in France also there's people protesting in Peru in Sri Lanka in Holland in England like literally people are protesting everywhere in the world um, and What's fascinating is that how Aquarius, because Aquarius governs technology and the community, like that's what it represents. So how technology is going to adjust itself for this, right? So that the revolution obviously is not going to be televised. We already, we were already forewarned that like, like many, many years ago, but how are we going to use technology um, to create a revolution that calls our power back in a, in the most empowering way for everyone. You know, I just think that's something fascinating to explore. Okay, so going back to the dates, um, Pluto retrograde happens um, on May 1st until the 1010 portal, October 10th. Now, why is this so significant? So the number 10 in numerology, one represents new beginnings, leadership, new chapters, and alignment right the number one is aligned zero is like a quartz crystal it just amplifies everything so but 10 also represents um, completion 
it represents um, a closing point, right? So nine is like, is when things still have to be closed and 10 is like, let's close the chapters on this book. So Pluto is going to close a chapter collectively. And I, my like uh, intuition is that it's gonna close the chapter in something within the British monarchy. And why? Because, okay, um, Pluto entered its shadow phase. First, it entered the shadow phase on January 8th in Capricorn. Then it entered its retrograde on May 1st in Aquarius. Then it went back and it's going to go direct in Capricorn. And then it's going to leave its shadow phase in um, Aquarius on February 1st, a day before the 2-2 portal. So it's just really fascinating if we look at all the numbers of Pluto. Like, and honestly, like this is not by chance. Um, it's not normal for these things to happen, like Pluto ending its retrograde on the 10-10 portal and it leaving its shadow phase the day before the 2-2 portal. That's not normal. You can go look it up yourself. The synchronous, the statistic, the statistical probability of that is um, too high for it to be just by chance. I'm not a I'm not a mathematician, so I can't come up with like the significant like p value of it. Um, but I hope if you are an engineer and you're watching this, you will help me out and you will tr you will figure out what uh, that statistically significant value is of this happening. Um, but. You see with this Pluto, it's dancing between Capricorn and Aquarius, Capricorn and Aquarius, right? During this retrograde period. And th this wonderful astrologer, Pam Gregory, has been talking about this since last year, how this move from Capricorn to Aquarius is this move from top-down structures because Capricorn is very orderly, right? Like Capricorn is very logical and it's like, it has to be done A, B, C, D. Whereas Aquarius is more like flowing. Aquarius is an air sign. I know a lot of people think it's a water sign, aqua. I don't know why they named it like that, but Aquarius is an air sign. So Aquarius moves very fast. So it's not like, um, it's not systematic. It's more of like more creative, right? It's more of a flowing energy. And so uh, Aquarius represents the community. So we're moving from top-down structures to community structures, right? Like community banking, community healthcare, community education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, when all of this is happening, um, the reason why I think it's going to be connected to the British crown is because um, it... Pluto is going to go direct on, on October 10 during the 1010 portal. And King Charles, uh, he's being crowned um, king on May 6, which is the day after the eclipse, which is uh, the day after the 5 5 portal. And Queen Elizabeth, she transitioned um, on uh, 9 8, September 8th, which was a day before the full moon and a day before the 9 9 portal. And so, you know, a lot of these um, people in power, they understand the power of portals. Portals are not good or bad, portals are neutral. Um, and they are using this heightened energy you know, to hold that power. If we just think about the British um, Empire, right? They were literally all over the world. Um, I think there were only like five countries in the whole world that were not colonized. Um, there's a reason why they took crystals, they took precious metals, because crystals and precious metals hold a lot of energy. They can anchor and hold a lot of energy. They took a lot of um, uh, historical facts, right? Like, um, uh, for example, um, my wife, she's from Myanmar and the queen, she took a Buddha statue from a temple and she took it with her to England. And then she started having headaches and migraines. And then the statue started giving her um, like messages in her dream. And like, because it caused that imbalance in her, like she sent it back to the temple, right? But there's a lot of, um, there's so many artifacts that have not been sent back to their countries, right? Um, but there's a reason why the British Empire was so powerful and continues to be so powerful. It's like the center of, uh, of economics in a way, especially when it comes to trading. And so they're working with these, with these energy portals 
And because Pluto is about power and transformation, and because power and transformation is changing from the traditional top down, like kings and uh, queens and, and the, I don't know what to call them, the working class, um, now we're switching from Capricorn in that structure into Aquarius. So no longer dealing with kings, queens, monarchies, presidents, ministers, and all of that. I mean, this is gonna take a really long time, right? Like this is gonna take a very long time, but I think this 1010 portal when Pluto goes right, um, direct is gonna be a big marker point for, for the British structure. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, but anyways, um, Think about yourself, you know, always bring it back to yourself. How can you use this information to empower yourself? How can you work with this heightened energy of the eclipse of the 5-5 portal of Pluto going retrograde? Um, a lot of people fear retrogrades, but retrogrades are not are not things for us to fear. Though I think the reason why we fear retrogrades is because you know, the planet, if we just think about it um, from like a biological point of view, uh, we're so used to stars. I mean, planets look like stars to us, right? Because they're so far away, they just look like tiny uh, dots in the sky. Um, as we see these planets moving and it stops, it's like, whoa, what's happening? I'm so, like as humans, we're like, we're so used to this moving in this direction. So for us, it causes a little bit of like, whoa, what's happening? You know, it's like, um, it's not used to um, the familiar, trajectory of that planet and and our reptilian brains are taught to focus on familiarity because when things become unfamiliar to us like a retrograde for example a a, pat, a planet or a body of um a cosmic body not moving the way it's supposed to be moving it causes us to like be like whoa what's happening do i need to be afraid right because the brain is taught to focus on safety and survival it's just the brain that we've been inherited by ancestors and what we have to do now is reprogram our brains to find continue to find safety yes but dig into the subconscious mind and you know, change these structures, right? Sometimes uncertainty is the most beautiful thing. Think about your life when you went to an unexpected place or you met an unexpected person. Um, you probably had an incredible experience, right? Like I know a lot of us, I don't like surprises sometimes, um, but I secretly do. And it's like, that the joy that you can get from the unexpected things in your life like you know transmute it alchemize it because pluto does represent that and this eclipse that's on the five five portal um it is a scorpio eclipse and so again scorpio is showing us to really um call back our power embrace our power transform it alchemize it transmute it um so that you know we don't have to keep holding on to our fears and, and all of this. Um, so this is a pretty big deal, right? We um, Pluto retrograde happened on the same day as Beltane. Beltane, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not, but it's this traditional pagan holiday that was uh, practiced uh, throughout Europe, specifically in Ireland by the indigenous peoples of Ireland and the indigenous people of Europe um, before Christianity and Catholicism, etc., etc. So Beltane was a midpoint between the equinox and the solstice, so it's almost like also a point of stillness for them, right? And they saw the veil between the, between the dimensions. Um, they observed it to be extremely thin, so they used it as a time to light communal fires. Aquarius, communal, right? Um, with these communal fires, they would use it to cleanse their homes, to cleanse their selves, and um, to also bring back vitality and the power in their body. Because for them, like we have to understand that we have a modern calendar, calendar system. We have four seasons. But different um, traditions only would have two seasons, right? Um, some Celtic calendars actually only had two seasons, right? Um, others had three, others had four. And so for them, um, this they used the fire to bring back vitality because the sun would be stronger, 
right, during the, it, it's summertime. And so they use the fire to bring back vitality, which is literally power, like just bringing back the power of the fire. So you work with the elements that you feel called to work with. It's a Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse. Um, so Scorpio is governed by water. Um, we also have the Pluto in Aquarius with the air. So work with the elements. Uh, work with alchemy in this way to bring back balance and harmony into your body because this energy is extremely powerful. You may feel more anxious, you may feel more overwhelmed than usual because this energy is so extremely powerful because there's just so much that we're working through. We're ending a quant we're closing the quantum gateway. So also right now is the like your last chance to not last chance but like last easiest chance to jump timelines you know it's so like really focus your intentions manifesting is extremely fast this week so focus your intentions but don't just manifest out of a whim like i want this i want that no you have to find alignment first otherwise you're going to manifest things you don't want so really connect with the subconscious, find alignment, pause, find that stillness, connect with the root, with the sacral, with the solar, whatever energy centers are um, more present in your awareness now, right? We all have to, like, all of our energy centers are working differently because we're processing different things in terms of our soul's karma. So you have to practice this sermon. You have to see what um, you need to work on, work on specifically so we're hosting a special eclipse ceremony where we're going to be connected with our spirit guides to do an alchemy ritual to release any final attachments that we may be holding on to because on the 5-5 portal during this lunar eclipse, during this full moon, um, it's also Vesak Day. Vesak Day is this Buddhist holiday. It's actually the most sacred Buddh uh, Buddhist holiday um, where it celebrates the birth the enlightenment and the transition of buddha and buddha taught us about detachment right and um, living in harmony detached um, but also detachment has to happen in a balanced way right um, you have to be somewhat attached to your body because you have to keep it alive right but it's you have to understand that you're taking care of this beautiful vessel but at the same time this is not you right so like with everything you have to come into it from a lens of harmony how can you create more harmony within these concepts and it's not something that's going to happen like through your head like yes um you can try to do it through your logic mind but that's more difficult it's better if you just like focus on the feeling of your energy field focus on how your soul is feeling focus on how your body's feeling because those are the signals it's like the indicators once you pick up on those indicators then you can focus on the like most appropriate things for you specifically of how to cultivate that harmony and so it's just a really beautiful um closing of this quantum gateway that we have um with with this uh lunar eclipse in Scorpio and definitely work with it intentionally meditate connect with your soul as much as you can work with grounding crystals black crystals especially if you want to connect with Pluto and we're having that special ceremony if you want to join us you can click the link in my bio to get more information or you can um, click in the description of this video if you're watching this on YouTube to learn more about that ceremony. Um, but during this time, it's extra, extra important for you to drink more water because some of the healing happens automatically because your soul is healing stuff for you in the etheric planes. That's why when you sleep, um, you may not be this week, you may not feel like you actually rested even though you're sleeping eight hours plus. Um, because your soul is so busy doing things in the etheric planes or you may be helping others in the etheric planes, right? So just remember to um, rest more, drink more water, eat grounding food, so anything that grows from the ground um, and try to spend some time in nature because this energy is very overwhelming and in order for you to um, not get overcharged um, within your energy field, go and put your feet on the ground or put your back against a tree to help you to harmonize that um, that excess energy that's coming from the cosmos, right? Because sometimes it's like, tone it down, like, you know, like, chill out. It's, it's, it's a bit much at times. So be gentle with yourself, listen to your body, listen to your intuition, 
and honor, honor the messages that you're receiving. I'm wishing you an incredible eclipse, an incredible May ahead. I hope that your transformation happens in the most graceful and empowering way possible. Much love. Bye.